So the UK and China in 2012 had a big, big argument uh, when the Prime Minister David Cameron met the Dalai Lama. Uh, and for 16 months, there was no real contact at ministerial level. And then in 2015, we suddenly have what was called by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Beijing, the Golden Age. So how did we go from the UK and China being in deep freeze only three years ago, suddenly to being the biggest friends? And I think uh, there's two reasons behind that. The first is that the policy towards China in the UK is being exceptionally run from the Ministry of the Treasury, basically, not the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And there's a kind of patronage over this policy area by the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer, the George Osborne. So he's really taken ownership over this issue and he really wants to run the China policy. And at the heart of that, which is the second issue, is um, making London a international centre for renminbi trading. So this really makes sense for the Chinese because London is a very big market, very global market, biggest in Europe and one of the biggest in the world not as politicised as New York, and I think they see strategic value in having London as their core partner. And they're willing to forget, uh, but probably not forgive, a lot of the other issues um, about the kind of UK-China relations, Hong Kong, the Dalai Lama, all of these complicated issues, because it matters to them to have London as a big, big finance partner. And I think for the UK, it really matters because, to be honest, the growth from renminbi trading has gone up really a huge amount every year, about 100, 150% in the last three years. And London is really in the key position to be able to substantially increase renminbi trading. And I think that will create uh, an expectation in London of new business uh, and a way, of engaging if, uh, a way of engaging with China in a very different and new way and creating good quality, uh, you know, kind of results like good quality Chinese investment in infrastructure good quality Chinese investment in, you know, kind of manufacturing in Britain that will create jobs. If this policy works from the UK, uh, then it will have an impact on Europe because it will mean that there will be business uh, coming from the city of London to the rest of Europe, hopefully. Uh, there will be ways in which other European partners can see the UK's new ta tactics of getting good quality investment from China working. But I think there are lots of risks. Um, firstly, the one risk that is very clear is the Chinese investment in the UK now is very, very small, 0.1% of the overall stock of foreign investment. So even if it went up 10 times in the next two to three years, that's still only 1%. And already there are very, very big issues about Chinese governance, about whether Chinese have the knowledge to invest properly, knowledge of the nuclear sector, which is one area where China wants to invest in the UK. And so there's a very, very big issue of expectations, of experience, and of whether really the UK is geared up to having substantial amounts of new Chinese investment and public opinion, both in the UK and Europe. And I think finally, the second thing is the possibility of London being a renminbi trading centre. Well, obviously, this is a story that has to increase very, very quickly. Renminbi, everything shows us that Chinese currency will be internationalising very, very quickly. So, you know, there's a big, big issue of how fast it can go without the world being slightly overwhelmed.